Yeah. I feel good, yeah. I feel healthy, you know? The secret to traveling is just alcohol and drugs, you know? If you do enough of that, you won't worry about the pain. I consider it a church. These are the churches, these are the worshipers, and we go from church to church doing our gospel. Put your hands together for Jeff Dye! Good to be here, this is exciting. It's very exciting to be performing indoors. It's been a weird year and it's nice to just have indoors is what I'm happy about. I, uh, I was ahead of the curve on not supporting this whole pandemic thing. I, uh, well, the way I handled it is I just went to countries that didn't care about the pandemic. So that's how I dealt with it. I just, from day one, I was like, all right, I'll go to the countries that don't care. I went to Florida, uh, <laughs> Texas, Mexico. Te uh, Mexico was definitely the most gangster about the pandemic also. I don't know if you've been to Mexico. It was, they, they don't care at all. I, li I landed in Mexico, I was like, you want me to wear this mask? They're like, why? <laughs> I was like, you didn't hear? There's like a whole thing going on. And he was like, dude, we're still dealing with pirates. You think we give a shit about COVID? My wife's been missing since March, you prick. All right. I was like, all right, could have said no mask. <laughs> all right. I don't know, it's great. Mexico is the most fun place. I don't know if you guys have ever been there, but there's no rules or laws or anything. You can get pulled over drunk driving and the cops are like, all right, uh, give me your shoes. You're like, all right, yeah. <laughs> It's insane. It's the most crazy. I was on the beach uh, with a woman in Cabo, and I said the F word out loud because I'm a grown-up, right? So we can say all the words we want because we're grown-ups. I say the F word out loud, and this Mexican guy starts yelling at me. Right? I go, fuck. And he goes, hey, man, amigo, hey. I was like, ugh. He goes, you can't be cursing. There's families around and babies on the public beach. It's a public beach, white guy. Look, baby, 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 family, family. You're saying the F word on the public beach in front of the families and the babies? And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. And he's like, eh, it's okay. <laughs> what was all that about? He's like, you wanna buy some cocaine? I was like, what? What's... Where am I? What is this, heaven? <laughs> I like Mexico though, because you can drink as much as you want and nobody gets mad at you. Right? That's my most favorite part. I try getting a drink in America after 2 a.m. They'll yell at you. Not Mexico, you could be humping a pop machine at 4 a.m. and they'd be like, get him some shots. You're like. Eh. I was so drunk in Mexico, I looked like the dude from Mortal Kombat when it says finish him. I was just like. <laughs> One night I, I drank uh, way too much, drank way too much and I lost my group. I don't know if you've ever had that happen where you just lose your group. It's very embarrassing. Just wandering a foreign country, no one cared. No one's looking for me. I, I, I just uh, found myself at some bar, I don't know how. It was just me and six old Mexican guys dancing. I was like, all right. Just dancing with each other. I'm like, where's all the senoritas? And they're like, we don't know. I was like, all right. And then I thought that I had to burp. <laughs> yeah. Not proud of it, pretty gross. Thought a burp was coming. I was expecting air, just going, and then puke. I puked. I puked on the ground, I puked on my shirt. It was very embarrassing. A lot of puke, a lot. Bartender saw me puke and he goes, Amigo! And I was like, oh no. He goes, you want another drink? I was like, no. This is the inside of my body on the outside of my body. It's probably a good time to call it. And I'm not making this up. He goes, okay, maybe just some wine then. I was like, what? Like, what's, what's happening here? I asked the old Mexican guys so I was dancing with, I was like, why would he offer me wine when he just saw me puke all over the joint, right? And they made it sound like, uh, like it was normal. They took his side. They tried to make it sound like it was normal by doing those drinking sayings. You guys know these? It's like, beer before liquor. Never been sick. Never right? You guys all know. But he must not have known it because he goes, no, beer before wine, you'll be fine. I was like, no. <laughs> no. No, it's not true just because you made it rhyme. That's not... <laughs> we're not wizards. You could just go home tonight, like, have sex holding the magnet, you can't get pregnant. You're like, no, that's not... Don't try that. Yeah, th yeah. 
Things aren't true because they rhyme. Even the one you guys knew, beer before liquor, never, that's not real. I hope you're not at the bar going, how does it go, honey? Is it wine? Is it beer? Is it li I don't know how. No, that's not how science works. It's not like you're gonna get hammered tonight and then you wake up with a hangover and be like, man, I should have done that in a different order. That's <laughs> not how it works. If those sayings were real, they would go, beer before liquor, pee the futon. <laughs> Whiskey before vodka, had my car get in the yard. Or, tequila before tequila, turns out my friend Chris is gay. Right, that's how, <laughs> that's how I found out, you know what I'm saying? You know who hates that joke? Chris. Yeah, Chris hates it. Chris. Old closet Chris came to a show. He's like, what was that about? He's like, you shouldn't have touched my leg, dude. I wish I was gay all the time. I don't know about you fellas. I, I knew the black guy would be like, hell no. I, I know, I know, I know you. I, but I was talking to everyone else, you know? <laughs> No, I wish I was gay all the time. I think I'd be great at being a gay dude, man. I'm very sm smiley, I'm very friendly. I, I, I like fashion, I love parades, you know? I just don't like dudes, and I guess that's the most important part, which is it's frustrating. I'm like, come on, let me in. Come on, I'll be the crazy gay guy that dates chicks, you know what I'm saying? Because they're always having a good time. Have you seen these gay guys? They're always fashionable, they got tons of money, they're, they've got beautiful women around them, the guys are never pregnant, you know? I'm like, that seems all right. Uh, doesn't seem like gay people are having more fun than us, too. Doesn't seem like they're having more fun? We are. Yeah. Yeah, I'm right. See, they're too shy. They're going, I don't know if he should be joking about this. Thank you. That was, this joke's, this joke's certified by a homosexual. He just did it. He just said, go on, carry on. Yeah, I'm telling the truth up here. <laughs> gay people are having more fun than us. Actually, I mean, let me amend that. Gay men are having more, lesbians look pretty pissed off, don't they? <laughs> it's gay guys, they're the ones I'm like, I wanted that. It's... Every lesbian I know has like my hair cut and like carpenter jeans, and she's like, fuck you. I, like, I don't even know that. I don't even know that lady. I don't know why she's mad at me. Yeah, I'm just trying to enjoy Sarah McLaughlin like everyone else. <laughs> Didn't know. <laughs> no, I like gay people seem like they're having a good time. A lot of people are surprised when they find out I'm not gay in real life, you know? Like my, uh, like mostly my grandfather and my dad. <laughs> this guy the other night, we were at a bar and this guy said, he goes, you're not gay? I was like, no, I'm not gay. He goes, you're not gay. I was like, no. No, man, I'm not, I'm not gay. And he's like, why'd you let me buy you seven drinks? I'm like, well, you know. It's been a rough year, you know what I'm saying? Hey, let's not, don't make this weird. <laughs> no. I will say that's kind of a theme in my show, that I love all the people, that's something about me. I love everybody, man. I don't got no opinions about nothing negative. I love all the people. I'm, I don't care what you do, or what you look like, or all that. I love all the people. But when it comes to certain things, I'm a little more particular, like policy, po politics, you know? Politics are big nowadays. So like, I love gay people, but I don't believe in gay marriage, right? Because I'm a Christian, I believe in the Bible. I like gay, I love gay people. I just, when it comes to gay marriage, I'm a Christian, I believe marriage is between a man and a young woman sold by her parents. <laughs> in exchange for cattle, crops, and village safety. People say, Jeff, why aren't you married? Well, no one's made me a good enough offer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I want my 15 year old to be hot, but I want to get some goats in the deal. You know what I'm saying? Very religious. I do what the good book tells me. <laughs> I like doing that joke. I've been doing comedy for 15 years, and that's the only joke that stays in my act the entire my time. And I don't plan on taking it out. I like that joke because I love hearing the crowd and feeling the crowd get weird. <laughs> do you guys feel it? The second that you hear my little bird lips go, I don't believe in gay marriage, I can feel all of you guys go. <laughs> <laughs> we thought we liked them. <laughs> <laughs> you had to wait seven seconds. It's a pro-gay joke, but you gotta wait the fucking seven seconds. And everyone in here was like, I don't know, check please. 
No, that's a fun joke. I did that joke in San Francisco. And that, they couldn't wait the fucking seven seconds either. They're so reactionary. I was like, I don't believe in gay marriage. They're like, what did he say? Get him! I'm like, all right, calm down. It's just a mutiny of designer clothes coming at me. Get the fuck back. It's a pro-gay joke. I also had the opposite happen. I once did that joke in Knoxville, Tennessee. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. I don't know who I was trying to impress. I, I don't know why I thought a sea of red hats would like that gay joke. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I don't believe in gay marriage. I'm a Christian. I believe in the Bible. Everyone started clapping. This one, this one lady stood up. She's like, good for you. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> They're going to hate the punchline a lot. So I said the punchline, and the crowd didn't like it. Most of them didn't care. They just didn't laugh either. But this one lady went banana. She's like, yeah, I'm a piece of shit. I was like, man, it's just a joke. These are all just jokes. You don't have to get, ever get mad at a comedian. We're just clowns. We're just modern day clowns. Girl. You don't ever have to get mad at, we're not running for, this isn't a TED Talks, you know? You don't even have to agree. It's just us going, do you like me? That, that's all this is. So I'm trying to explain to her, it's like, it's just, this is just, I'm a comedian, so don't have to be upset with me, it's just jokes. And she's like, well, you're a piece of shit. And I was like, ma'am. She goes, you're awful. And I was like, please. And she goes, you're not funny. I was like, well, you're wrong there. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very funny. One of the best, hon. And then she's like, well, you're going to hell. And I was like, oh, white people don't go to hell. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Just, drunk. And then she's like, well, you know, I'm a Christian. I was like, okay, well, then silence, rib. Hello, a man's talking. Shut the hell up. <laughs> Colossians 3.30 says, keep your bitches in check. And uh, that's what I'm here to do. That's a loose translation. I read the Snoop Dogg Bible. So. It's called the bezel. <laughs> this crowd's very fun. I love you guys. Cheers. Let's put them up. This is going to be a good time. Love you. Thanks for being here on a Sunday. It's nice. Ooh. Whiskey. What's that saying? Whiskey makes me... No, no. Whiskey makes my dick not work. I think that's how it goes. That's how... Again with the rhymes. We covered this. Uh, this is fun, man. I love my life. I've got a great life. We all got great lives. I can just look at you and tell you got great lives. Everybody looks good. That's why I don't understand. People get mad all the time. It's like, what? What are you mad about? We live in America. It's pretty good. Right. I've been over 50 countries. Some countries, they, you can't say that. You know, That's what I'm wrong. Because I'm happy all the time. That's something about me. I'm a very happy guy. Very smiley. Very positive. Uh, people hate it. <laughs> That's something your therapist won't tell you. If you find happiness, you too will annoy everyone around you. <laughs> No one likes it. Complete strangers just see me come and they're like, nope, kill that guy. You know? Good morning. No one like, everyone likes being grumpy. That's like the cool thing to be now. Just walk around, pissed off. Great life, great car. Just still like, <laughs> Nobody's even got good reasons to be mad. People pissed off nowadays. They're like, wow, this is bullshit. I don't get Wi Fi in here. You're like, that's not. Well, I ordered a venti and she brought me a grande. You're like, these aren't. Some countries have actual problems. That's when I'm wrong. I've been over 50 countries. Some countries I'm like, why are you grumpy? And they're like, we need water. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I get why he's upset, you know? <laughs> Everyone here is like, well, my smart car wasn't charged and I was late to Temecula or whatever, you know? <laughs> they're like, that's not a problem. Right now, someone's having their clitoris sawed off by a dictator. <laughs> and, you're co and you're complaining about your Tesla. <laughs> Right? Everybody's problems nowadays are so weird. Sometimes men over-explain things to me. You're like, that's not a problem. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. That's how good your life is. We have to make shit up. And I know that how this sounds and looks. I, I know. I know how this looks optically. Some people might hear me say this and go, well, it's easy for this guy to be happy. He's a straight white male with money and a big dick. Um, <laughs> you know, I hear you. <laughs> you know, I know. I know. You're not wrong, Philadelphia. I'm just saying that we should all be happy. That's the point. That's the point of the material. <laughs> no, life's good, man. 
Life is very beautiful. Like, especially for us, man, living in America. I know I keep saying that, but it's true. Like, think about it. The way we look at Jeff Bezos is like how everyone else looks at us. You know, all these people in Syria are like, what, she has multiple pairs of shoes? Fuck that bitch. You know, like, like, what? He has, his, he has warmth in his house? You know, that's like a that's a luxury that we don't even th care or think about. You know, I think about it all the time about how we just get to do anything we want. That's what I think is the biggest blessing. We do anything we want. You ever thought about that? We do anything. We just do all the drugs. <laughs> we don't even care anymore. We just do. We just anywhere. I had a kid sneak into my show in New Jersey. Snuck in the back. Sold out show. He sneaks in the back and he just lights up a joint. Right. And my poor boss has to go up to him. And go, hey man, you can't smoke a joint in here because this is a place. <laughs> And he was so chill about it. He's like, oh, my bad, my bad. I'll just smoke this weed pen. And he goes, no, no, don't smoke a weed pen either. <laughs> and the guy goes, oh, no problem, no problem. I'll just pop this gummy. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> we just do anything. We do anything we want. That's how good our lives are. We have dogs in restaurants. <laughs> Think about that. It was just canines, just in nice restaurants. <laughs> Remember the first time you saw a service dog? You were like, why is he here? <laughs> And then some lady's like, well, I can't be sad for even two minutes. So. <laughs> now it's everyone's problem. I don't give a fuck. Don't give a... <laughs> and if you have a service animal, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. That's beautiful that we've taught animals to help people. That's nice. That's nice. I'm not mad at it. I'm just saying, do you remember a, a, a long time ago when there were zero service animals? And now there's 500 per restaurant. It's almost like some of us are lying. Right, because you never see like the service dog. It's like a German shepherd for some ex-Marine Corps guy who needs it to not flash back to Iraq and snap everyone's neck at Chili's. You never see that service animal. It's always some delayed flight because some brassy Jewish lady's like, I need my service squirrel. It's like, you don't. You don't. I don't know, life is good. We get to do anything we want. If, like, it's crazy how free we are in America. I know everyone says that, oh, there's no freedom anymore, blah, blah. No, like, if I want to be a lady tomorrow, I can. That's how good it, we have it. I can just be a lady tomorrow and none of you will say shit. I'll be at the coffee shop and your kids will be looking at me and you'll be like, don't stare at the... Uh, uh. Not one person's gonna go, what's with the six foot four bearded bitch? Not one person. That's how f we just do anything. That's how good it is to be us. My dad couldn't have done that. My dad couldn't have just worn a dress to the factory. They would have murdered him. They would have murdered him. They'd have been arrested. The judge would have been some old white bigot. He'd be like, well, they had to kill him. He's wearing a dress. <laughs> not guilty. Get out of here, boys. Right? That's... <laughs> not now. Not in the good time. Now, if I wear a dress to work and you don't call me Christine, you're fired. <laughs> what a time to be alive. What are we crying about? Life is so good. I don't know how anybody could be mad in modern times. We have everything, man. We have Amazon.com. Have you ever thought about how cool that is? Anything you want, you just push buttons on a phone, it just shows up. Wow, you'll talk shit about the guy who created it, like, ah, that guy, and then you just, you know. You'll order a camel statue and it's there in like 20 minutes. And if, like, anything your little heart can dream, you can have. I sometimes get stuff from Amazon.com. I didn't even, I didn't even think I ordered, you know? I'll just open my door, there's a package. I'm like, oh, I guess Drunk Jeff likes Ninja Turtle toys. All right. Just put those with the others. <laughs> great time to be alive, man. Oh. I do want to say that if I say anything tonight that makes you upset or makes you uncomfortable or it makes you not like me or it makes you feel icky or cringy or whatever, you should know that I don't care. <laughs> Don't care. And not like in a cool guy where like, I don't even care about, no, I don't even care about what I'm saying. 
I got into this job because I love people and I like making them happy. That's all. I love you. I love you. I'll say literally anything. I don't. You know, I'll be like, abortions are bad. And you'll be like, shut up. We had one. I'm like, we should all get them. I'm just kidding around. We should all. We should all. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I just want you to be happy. Leave happy. I want you to be. I want you to feel good in your heart and heads. I like people. That's why I do this job. It's, it's what I like. Yeah, I love like if after the show, this guy was like, hey man, that was a good show. And he shakes my hand, he goes, just between me and you though, I got the impression that you're a Republican. I would look at him and I'd be like, you're goddamn right I'm a Republican. I drive a big ass Jeep with 40 inch tires. I love whiskey, I have a shit ton of guns. I don't mess with any of these granola peddling dorks, you know? But if he, but if he goes, oh, not me, I'm, I'm a Democrat, I'd be like, me too, baby, Seattle, Washington. Born and raised. I love an espresso, I like a hike, I don't screw with any of these honky-tonk motherfuckers, you know? So see, that's where I, I don't, I'm you. Whatever you like, whatever you're in, that's me. I'm you, I'm just like a dog. I just sit by you, I go, me too, me too, pet, that's all. That's how I feel. I'll be on a date with a girl, she's like, the patriarchy, and we're oppressed, and I'm like, yeah, we gotta make some changes, you know? That night I'm with Randy, like, fuck these whores. Like, you know, I don't care. I don't. I'm what it, when I'm in Florida, I lean into that. When I'm in Portland, I'm like, vote for Bernie or what? I don't care. I just love you. When I was getting into the comedy club, there was a, there was a black at the front. He goes, can I see your vaccination? I was like, hey, man, we don't do that shit, right? We don't, we don't, we don't fuck with that vaccine. He goes, I'm vaccinated. I go, all right, here's my. You know what I'm saying? I'm just whatever. I'll help you tear down a statue and put it back up. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I just love whoever I'm with. Right? Aren't you tired of arguing with each other? Aren't you tired of like, they're trying to, it's exhausting. It is, man. You're not, and that's the thing I try to tell everybody. Nobody's changing nothing. Just, we gotta love each other because no one's changing shit. If you know some guy that doesn't shut up about Donald Trump and all of his, so nonsense, you just gotta love that guy. Just love that guy. I know he's annoying, just love him. If you know some Mohawk lady who thinks there's a hundred genders and all, just love her, just, just love her. It's not like, the, it's not like the, if the Trump guy hey, makes a good point on the Mohawk lady, she's gonna go, hey, maybe he's right, and starts, it's not, no. No one's changing shit. I think about it all the time, we gotta just get along. I, uh, I don't know. My mom and dad, they're, they're not like that. They always want to argue about everything. Like on Thanksgiving, they were like, these trans people, and it's just ridiculous. They want me to, and, and I'm just going, mom, dad, how many trans people you know? <laughs> uh, they were like, well, we don't know any. I said, yeah, why do you fucking care? <laughs> it's not your jurisdiction, you know? That's why I don't understand. Everyone's got too many opinions now. It's insane. People ask me shit. What do I? I'm a comedian. I didn't even graduate high school. I don't know shit. <laughs> People, what do you think about Iraq, Jeff? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Do you want to have a drink? <laughs> right, I don't. Please. What do you think about Black Lives Matter? I, got, I don't know. Why would? Do I look like I know? I don't think that's what the black community wants, the white guy coming and going, hey, here's the things I'd change. Like, I don't know, I don't know. It's not my jurisdiction. I don't know, I just love everybody. I don't have any goddamn answers. I didn't even understand Terminator 2. How do I? I'm sitting there on mushrooms going, I think he's made of metal? I don't know. I mean, they could shoot him and he comes back. He was like a bad guy, but now he's a good guy? I don't know. He killed that old lady, but I think we're supposed to root for him. I don't know. I, I try though. I do try to fix stuff. I try to think of ideas. Here's one I've been working on. If I was king of America, right, like in charge, I would make it a law that every woman at all times has to have a loaded gun. At all times. So yeah, the, every, you, yeah, no matter where you go, like if, if, I, if a cop pulls you over and goes, ma'am, where's your gun? You say, I left it at home. You get a ticket. <laughs> And then he, he kind of bullies you a little, like, go, get your, go home, get your gun. And you go, okay. Every girl has to have a gun at all times, no matter what, no matter where you're going, no matter what you're doing, you have to be armed. Do you know how much better men would behave 
If we knew every woman that we would be coming in contact with was armed, it would fix that. It would fix all the shit feminists are complaining. All these the groups where they go, you know, no matter, it would fix all of it. It would fix everything. Cat calling, right? They'd be like, "Nice titties, bitch." You're like, "What the fuck you say?" You know, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. I meant nice top. That's what I meant. I forgot about the Jeff Law. My bad. We could be on our 15th date together. 15th date. You got your gun. Date 15. And I'd be like, do you think maybe? I think it'd be cool. If you're ready. I don't know if you're ready, but if you're, if you're ready, I think it'd be nice. If, you know, it might be. There'd be none of this first date, like, just touch it, just, just get it wet. There'd be none of that. Right, I know girls nowadays, they like these little pithy guys, these little weird guys wear jean jackets and shit. <laughs> Let's say on your date with one of those guys, you like those kind of little weird guys, if that's what you're into. And then when the tab comes, he's like, well, I believe in uh, equally, all, so maybe we should just split the check. You could just take your gun out, slide the tab across the table. Like, all right. You know what I'm it works. Because that's why men treat women differently. Even if we don't know we're doing it, we only do it because you're small. You're too small. It's a problem that's been in nature forever, you know? Look at bears. Every man bear, big. Lady bear, a little smaller. Monkeys, right? We come from monkeys. Male monkey, big. And the female monkey, just a little smaller. It's true. And we come from that. So we just don't, we don't even know we're doing it, but sometimes we just look at a lady, we go, oh, she's little. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We don't mean to, it's just in the back of our monkey brains. Like I used to work at this warehouse, and my boss was named Helen, she was this tiny lady, and then I'd always be doing something wrong, she'd come down, she'd be in my face, like, you know that you're showing up late, and you never tuck in your shirt, and you're supposed to be clean shaven, I'm not even, don't even get me started on that. And in the back of my head the whole time, I'm like, I could knock the fuck out of this lady. <laughs> Like it's not, I know that sounds horrible, but it's just a size thing, it's not a gender, it's just me going, nobody this little should be fucking talking to me like this, you know? But if I knew she had a gun, I'd be like, you're right, you're right. I should be showing up to work on time more. <laughs> a girl came up to me after the show in Sacramento, she goes, well, what would, uh, what age would you give a woman a gun? If you want to give all women guns, what age do you give them? You can't give a little kid a gun. And I was like, you know, I'm a comedian, right? <laughs> what, are you gonna run this by Congress? What's happening here? <laughs> this wasn't a real idea. <laughs> but I started thinking about it. I was drinking with my buddies. I started thinking about it. I think I figured out the answer. <laughs> when to give a woman a gun. Because here's the thing. It's hard to be a person, right? It's just hard to be an earthling. Male or female, it sucks, it's hard. You're gonna have stuff you gotta deal with. Life is, you know, chaos. It's, it's, it's hard to be a human being. And it's especially hard to be a lady because you're a little smaller. <laughs> it's been hard on you forever. Forever. I mean, it wasn't even that long ago that if this lady said, your comedy sucks, I'd be like, please, calm down. This was a long time ago. And she's like, no, your comedy sucks. I'd be like, she's a witch, and, and they kill her. <laughs> Just some gentleman come out and goes, this the way? I go, yeah, get her out. And then put her in, her, put her in the river. <laughs> they might set her on fire. I don't know. It was regional. Not everybody had a river. But that's unfair to treat women like that. It's, women are always getting treated badly. And it's, uh, I always, they're always victims of assault and robbery and all this stuff. All this bad stuff happens. Oh, take nature, for example. Take God out of it. Take, take the patriarchy out of it. Take men out of it. You, at a certain age, you just bleed. <laughs> that's not fair, is it? That's not fair. Just a certain age, some, sometimes nine, sometimes four. 13, you just, it's as early, some, I did the homework. <laughs> and that's not fair. Just one day you wake up and you, you and, and, and society just goes, deal with it. <laughs> not our problem, deal with it. You know, keep a calendar, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. 
And you can be all like, I don't care, I'm not gonna deal with it. Or that'll affect your health, that'll affect your social status, something. You learn a responsibility right away, where you're like, oh man, I gotta deal with this. That's Earth just going, you bleed now, bitch. You bleed. <laughs> also, here's your gun. Right, that's, the per that's the perfect, right then. That's the moment. You say, here's some tampons, here's your gun, go easy on these motherfuckers, right? Yeah? And I know when I do this bit, every time I do this bit, I look at the men's faces. And they're like, uh, I, I know, I know. I've met women, we're gonna lose a lot of good guys. You know? We're gonna lose a lot of good guys. Some nice guy's gonna come home, honey, I'm home. And she just gotta go like, pop, pop. You know? just, right, just right on his front steps of his own house. He's just bleeding out. Honey, why? And she's got his phone. Who the fuck's Janice? You know? He's like, what? And she's like, who's Janice? You seem to be real friendly with Janice on Facebook. He's like, that's my sister. You've met her like 20 times. You know? And she's like, oh God, oh. Oh, that's right, he has so many sisters. Okay, all right, I'm sorry. You know, that's gonna happen all the time. Because women are, they're fast, you know. Women can just turn on a, my last girlfriend, we'd just be sitting in bed. It'd be like mid-sentence. She'd be like talking about a movie or something. She's like, I love this director because I think he made that one film with Sean Penn. Who the fuck's hair is this? And I'm like, oh. I have like immediate diarrhea. Like, I don't know. Like, oh. I, don't know. I think that's your hair. And then she's like, oh yeah, it is. Anyways, it's like, what? what was that? And those are the people I'm saying we should give guns to. So I get it. How that's scary. I do love women though. I love women the way women love brunch. <laughs> like that's a lot. I love women. I have no wife, uh, no girlfriend, no kids. Um, ugh, that sounded so negative. <laughs> what I meant is I'm rich. <laughs> that's I meant. Just, so much money. Uh, no, I, uh, I had a girlfriend for a little while, but we stopped doing that. <laughs> It's just, yeah, it was, it was, that's the thing. She was like, uh, she was like, I love you. I was like, I love you. She's like, you're the best. She's like, you're the best. She's like, you're my favorite. I was like, you're my favorite. Right? I just say what she said. <laughs> that's a good tactic. You just repeat. She goes, she's like, I want to marry you. I was like, I want to marry you. She's like, forever. I was like, ugh. <laughs> I was thinking a few years, maybe renegotiate. I didn't know. Forever. Just saying that's making me queasy. Forever. You know how long forever is? Yeah. Yeah, that's, too, that's so long. People say it like so cute. We've watched all these Disney movies. You're like, oh, forever. I'll be with you forever. Forever. You know how long? Think of, be smarter. Think about forever. That's now. Picture whatever you're doing now. And then death. It's all of that. That's so much. That's all each. That's the rest. It's every single, from like, to like, it's the whole, all of sickness, all, no matter, all of it. It's the whole, did you know life in prison is only 30 years? That means even our own government's like, listen, he only killed a family. Let's not take forever away from him. This sounds crazy. Marriage seems fun, but like I said, just too long. I don't know. Maybe I'll get married. I think I'd be good at marriage, right? I can watch Netflix and not have sex. <laughs> Heck, I'm already doing it. <laughs> Maybe I am married. Am I married? I don't know if I'm married. I had to stop talking to a girl recently. Uh, we were messaging back and forth on Instagram. I never met her. Just We're just messaging. And uh, then I found out she was 19 years old. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, we can't. I was like, we can't do this. She's like, why? I was like, because you're 19 and I'm 38. She goes, oh my God, age is just a number. I was like, yeah, it's also how many years old you are. <laughs> it's kind of important, I think. Also, I don't like cliches. Age is just a number. That's a dumb cliche. That's like me being like, HIV is just letters. <laughs> it's, no. No. Important, I think. I like women my age anyways. I can't date a 19-year-old. I don't know any Pokemon, you know? 
I'm not gonna spend my whole right when you date a woman that young, you just feel so old. Going, you've never heard of the Goo Goo Dolls? Like it's not, it's not, it's not fun. You think everything you do is corny? I, I you know, I like women my age. I like to date a woman. My last three, I like a woman with kids. That's what I really like. My last three girlfriends all had kids. That's the best. He'll be like, what are you doing today? She's like, oh, we're gonna get smoothie bowls, then we're gonna go to Legoland, and then I, yeah. then I told the kids we see the Tom and Jerry movie, I'm like, shotgun, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Sounds fantastic. I'll just ride with you, I was going anyways. You know? <laughs> Did you know that uh, you can't go to Legoland if you're just one man? Did you know that? I tried to go to Legoland. I went, what? I said, one for Legoland. He goes, nope. <laughs> I was like, why? He goes, because we don't let just random men wander Legoland. I was like, I'm not a random guy. I'm not going to wander. I'm going to eat here. I'm going to ride the rides. I'm going to do Legoland shit. And just let me in there. And he was like, nope, we can't do that unless you have kids with you. You're welcome to come back on adult night where there's no kids on the property but we don't just let men into Legoland alone. And I was like, I was still confused and upset. So I was like, why? And then he just got right to the chase. He's like, because we're trying to decrease kidnapping. <laughs> Which I thought was an interesting choice of words. What do you mean decrease? <laughs> Not eliminate. Right, the decrease, like that's like Legoland being like, we know some kids are gonna get got. Trying to get the number low. Right, how many kids are getting kidnapped? Decrease. I said right to him, I go, oh, really? Well, if you ask me, you're about to increase kidnapping because I'm going to go find a fucking kid to get in here. <laughs> also, talk about best kidnapper ever, right? Steal a kid, bring him to Legoland, take him back home. That's the best kidnapping. That's the nicest kidnapper in the world. The police are like, tell us everything, son. He's like, actually, it was a pretty great day. You know? That guy talked a lot, but he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. He bought me this hat. My dad's never taken me to Legoland. <laughs> I definitely want kids, which is weird. Because everybody my age is already like, they're already done with it. They're like, you don't want to do that. I'm like, I don't know, I think 40 is a good time to start, you know? I'll find some kids. You know what I mean? When I wanted a dog, I just went and got a dog. It was so easy. I said, oh, I think I'm going to get a dog today. I just went, went, walked right into the place. They're like, you want this dog? And I was like, mm-hmm. They're like, you gonna kill it? I was like, mm. And they just gave me a dog. That's how easy it was. If I want a kid, I gotta find a lady and I gotta, it takes a long time and she's in the process. I wish, you know, I wish I could just go get a kid. Get like a five year old. He's just running around my house. My friends are like, what, well, you have a kid? We didn't even know you were dating. I'm like, I'm not. He's a rescue. <laughs> yeah, he's great. That's LeBron Barkley Christ. That's, uh, I named him after all my heroes, you know? He's still getting used to the leash, but he's a good-ass kid. Smart, too. <laughs> Dating's been difficult, too. Dating's been very hard for me, at least. I live in Los Angeles, where every girl's life is fantastic. Their lives are too good. Every girl in LA, you'll be like, you like snowboarding? They're like, I love snowboarding. My last boyfriend's dad owned Burton Snowboards and we took a private helicopter. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I don't think my dinner for two at Applebee's is gonna impress, you know? I took one girl to the Lakers game. I'm friends with the owner of the Lakers. I've known her for 15 years. She's a good friend of mine. We literally are sitting with the owner of the Lakers. And this girl waited like, I don't know, about 30 seconds before she was like, last time I came, I got to sit courtside and we met Shaq. And I was like, fuck, bitch, go home. Just go home. <laughs> you don't want love. You want to date a rapper. That's what you want. You don't, I don't got it like that. You guys like rap? I'm going to assume most of the crowd doesn't. <laughs> That's called profiling. See how it hurts your feelings? <laughs> I like rap music a lot. I just, uh, it's hard 
it's hard for me to rap. Like, I like to sing along to music I like, but you can't sing along to rap when you're, you know. <laughs> like, I don't know if you know, rap artists use the N-word a lot. A lot, a lot. And I don't know if you can tell by my face, voice, hair, clothes, and demeanor. I'm pretty white, pretty white. Some would say very white. So if I want to rap along with the rapper, I have to leave pauses, pauses. where the rapper's used the N-word. Right, that's very tricky. I'll be literally in my own house, I'm like, yo, where am I at? <laughs> He's my, I got, that I gotta act like I like, but my acting days are over, fuck them for life. I mean, that's hard. <laughs> that's harder than real rap music. Cause each one of those pauses can end my career. You know what I'm saying? That's the scary, they'll take it all away, Just, you know. I do it in the, in the privacy of my own house. I still leave pauses because Siri looks like a snitch, you know? I'm not dropping an N-bomb in front of Alexa. That's not a good idea. They'll take it all away. I'll be waiting tables in no time. They'll take my whole house, my car, everything. All my trophies. I'll be waiting tables. They'll be sitting there. They'll be like, weren't you on that TV show? I'm like, not anymore. I let it slip on a Drake song, so. But I could bring you a blooming Onion if you'd like. Do you guys mind tipping and change so I can take the bus home? They took the Tesla. I don't know, rap music is very hard too. One thing I find frustrating about rappers is they're so cool to me. I find them to be very cool, but they're so pissed off. What are they so mad about? They always look great clothes. They've always got great cars. All these hot chicks around them, and they're still like all like, man, fuck this shit. You're like, what are you mad about? You have my dream life. You have diamond teeth. Maybe smile a little bit. <laughs> teeth are made of diamonds. You could, if you're so grumpy, take that cool car around the block. I don't know, enjoy it. <laughs> While you're pissed off. Guy makes $50 million an hour. And he's like, man, fuck this shit. <laughs> you go to McDonald's, the kid that makes like $4 a year his employee of the month photo. He's like, he's all, that kid's happy. <laughs> I think my favorite person in music is a guy named DJ Khaled. This guy, I don't know if you know who he is. He's easily the most talented guy in the history of music. He really is, he really is. And I'll tell you why. If you don't know who DJ Khaled is, he's this heavy set music producer who likes to shout shit over other people's music. He's worked with everyone. Everyone's worked with him. Lil Wayne, uh, whoever you like. It's the whole spectrum. Lil Wayne all the way to Selena Gomez to Justin Bieber. Whoever you're into, this dude's worked with him. And what happens is you'll be enjoying a song by whatever artist you like. You're like, oh, this, this new Lil Wayne song's good. And then out of nowhere, he's like, DJ Khaled! He's like, what? Why'd that happen? And then he goes back to the song. You're like, all right, we're back to the song. And then he's like, we the best! You're like, what? <laughs> now he's hitting us with incomplete sentences? That seems strange. And here's why I think he's so genius and talented. Because you know it sounds terrible when he does that. I know it sounds terrible when he does that. So surely the artists know that that's awful also. So Justin Bieber, or Lil Wayne, they have to go to the producer. They say, oh, not the producer, but the label. And they have to say, hey, I love the new song, but can you take out the parts where DJ Khaled's just shouting shit? I don't like that, please take that out. And the poor label has to go, hey, we would like to. But he mixed the music, he produced the music, he paid for the studio time. He's the one that set you up all the people you're collaborating with. He made those connections and networking, and we have a deal with him also here at the label. So he's kind of got us by the balls. <laughs> And it worked. That's how genius he is. None of you can name any other music producers. We only know his name. Right, you, can't, you can name other ones like, like Jay-Z, but you only know Jay-Z because of his music, not because he's producing. Right? Same with DJ Khaled. He, we don't know, he doesn't have any music. He just produces. And we know him. The branding worked. That's how brilliant, you would never heard a song where it's like, go into the chapel and we're, God. Phil Spector! You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why'd that happen? <laughs> Gonna get married. I'm the best! <laughs> I added guns, because... 
Phil was an old gun nut, you know? But I'm having a little fight with my dog. It was just a long pandemic, you know? That's the thing. You might have probably got tired of each other in the pandemic a little. Maybe some tensions arose. My dog and me went through it, because I live alone with a dog. So during the pandemic, even he was looking at me like, uh, I could use uh, some me time. <laughs> you mind walking yourself for a little bit? I could use some space. My thing about my dog that we're having a problem is that I love him so much that I think of him as like a son. I'm like his dad and he's my son. That's how I think of him. So we'll wrestle like you would with a son. I'll wrestle around with him. But sometimes we'll be wrestling around. Me and my dog, we'll just wrestle. And then all of a sudden he'll get like a boner. I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you ever had that happen? I'm like, what? No, that's not our relationship. We're wrestling around. He's going, ha, ha, ha. I'm like, no. I'm like, go to your kennel, it's disgusting. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's inappropriate. I'm your dad. <laughs> I don't remember playing in the backyard catch with my dad when I was eight years old, just fully erect, like, yeah. <laughs> Throw it in your harder, daddy. You know, like, it's just, it's disgusting. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you the two best things that happened to me this year, though. The two best things that happened to me. One is, uh, the first best thing that happened to me is uh, I was with my buddy Randy, who, uh, one of my best friends, great guy. He's, he was going through a divorce, and uh, so he was very sad about it. I don't want to share too much about his personal life. It's personal, but he cheated, piece of shit. And, uh, <laughs> but he's sad about it. You know, I don't know her. He's one of my best friends. I don't know her, fuck her. You know, I'm on Randy's side. <laughs> So we're sitting there drinking together. I'm trying to cheer him up. You know, I'm saying stuff like, you oh, know, they hate it when you do that. You know, like, <laughs> and we're, <laughs> we're drinking. And uh, we're both sad. That's what I'm sad because he's sad. Anytime he's sad, I feel it. I'm sad too. So we're just being sad together. It was almost like God knew that he needed to do something. Cheer us up. He's like, God was like, I'm about to make these guys happy because they're so sad. I want to make them happy. So we're just sitting there being sad. And out of nowhere, the door to this crappy little bar swings open and this crazy lady comes in and goes, I need a cell phone charger and a Coors Light and I ain't got no money. <laughs> we cry laughed for like 45 minutes. It was the fucking funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. It was hilarious. We were so we were like, thank you God for this moment. We gave her Coors Lights all night. Nobody had a cell phone charger for a broken and half razor flip phone. So that... <laughs> That stayed uncharged. <laughs> but we got her some Coors, we sponsored that behavior. <laughs> but the best thing that's happened to me in my entire life, if I was honest, was I was waiting to get onto an airplane. I was flying from Seattle, Washington to Florida. And, I, and it's early in the morning, everyone's grumpy, you know, people are in the morning. And I'm just, you know, waiting in line, all happy. Right? And we're on that ramp that goes up to the airplane. And while we're waiting to get on the airplane, a bird walked by all of us. <laughs> <laughs> then got onto the airplane. <laughs> it was so funny. He just got on the airplane and no one else thought it was funny. I'm laughing, it was the fu it was so funny. And everyone just looking at me like, oh, what's he laughing? I was like, is a bird just boarded the plane? Why does no one else think it's funny? I was so frustrated. I thought it was hilarious. And I've got this problem where if I'm having a good time, I want everyone around me. I got a disease, you know, I'm trying to make everyone else think it's funny. So I was trying to make it funny. I was like, hey, that bird cut the line. And they're like, just stop it. That's not funny. You know? I was like, is he platinum? They're like, knock it off. You know? I don't know, maybe he's military. They're like, that's still not funny. I was like, all right. All right. I loved it, man. It made me so happy. One, it made me happy because I love watching birds walk. <laughs> I've always enjoyed that. It's just, they're so, they're so smooth with the rhythm, you know? And they don't got arms or nothing, so it always looks like they got their hands in their pockets. It's kind of like. <laughs> and it was very funny to see him board the plane. And uh, so, I, it's my turn to finally get on the plane, right? We board the plane, it's finally my turn. The second I got on the airplane, I start looking around for the bird, right? <laughs> Trying to find my bird. I know he's on there somewhere. And I can't find him, so I assume they must have got him off there, you know? That's probably a part of it. That probably happens all the time. Flight attendants just get the bird out. 
So I was like, ah, the bird's gone. So I put my headphones on, I go to sleep, right? And we take off. And we're in the air for about 45 minutes. 45 minutes into the flight, I wake up to pandemonium. The entire plane is losing their mind. Evidently, the bird didn't get off the plane. He was just hiding. And then 45 minutes of the flight, he's like, now's a good time to spaz. And he starts flying around the airplane. 200 people losing this shit and me just smiling like, ooh, it's my bird. And it's a problem, it is a problem. There's not a lot of space for a bird to be going crazy. And you can't just open a window and shoo shit out. Right, we'll all die. So this bird's going crazy, he's touching people, he's close. People are yelling, I mean, it was panic. Everyone's panicking. Flight attendants are yelling at all the, all the passengers. The passengers are going, it touched my hair! And one guy goes, it looked at me. That was my favorite. <laughs> looked at him. This one black guy was like, there's a motherfucking bird on this motherfucking plane! <laughs> that didn't happen, but that would be amazing. I wish that would have happened. That would have made me so I made that up, but it would have been best. So everyone's freaking out about this bird. Everyone's panicking about the bird. I'm very happy about it. It was so funny to me. Find this one dude, so smooth. This one dude, he stands up, he's had enough. He stands up, he takes his jacket off, and in like one swoop, the next time the bird comes around, he just swoops it and catches the bird. And we were like, oh shit. We're like, is that Jason Statham? Like, is that? We thought he'd be like, yeah, my daughter. You know, like we, uh, it wasn't, it was just a regular guy. But he catches the bird, he puts it in his jacket, and he brings it in back and puts it in that back area where the flight attendants gossip. <laughs> and, everyone, and everyone calms down, right? Everyone calms down. Everyone goes back to their books or back to sleep or whatever. Everyone calmed down. We're in the air for hours more. We finally land in Florida, and the first thing they do is they go get the bird and the jacket. <laughs> So they get the bird and the jacket and they bring it up to the front and they open the door and the flight attendant opens the jacket and the bird flies out. Right? And everyone cheered. Everyone's like, yay. Which is so corny. It's like they're cheering. On the plane, those same people are like eating chicken. You know, <laughs> Now you care about a pigeon or whatever. But what I, well, the reason I'm sharing this story is because it says a lot about our attitudes as human beings, man. I, it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. I was so happy. You should have heard these people. Everyone's like, this is ridiculous. Oh my God, I fly this airline all the time. It's like, they didn't do it on purpose, dude. <laughs> right, lady? It's, it's not like they were like, uh, uh, enjoy your flight, and they just bird. And they just, like they, they, it was an accident, and it was hilarious, and it was an adventure, and nobody got, it was so fantastic. Why I like it, because I've asked myself, why did all those people get mad and forget about it, and I'm still holding on to this as the greatest thing that ever happened to me? <laughs> and I think it's because one, it was very fun and funny, but two, I think, how smart is that bird? <laughs> right, birds can fly. Yes. That's their most famous attribute. <laughs> But it was like this one genius bird was like, I'm not doing that flight again this year. It's exhausting, I almost die every year. These people are already going south. I like to picture the bird at the airport looking at those monitors. Like... Is Florida south? I can't read, I don't know how. Guys, this has been very, very fun, and I love you guys. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. I mean, I didn't really take much time off, if I'm honest. I, uh, I just performed in different places that didn't care about COVID. <laughs> I just performed for all these people that uh, don't care about COVID, and then when all the liberals wanted their places open, now I'm performing for them. <laughs> that's, what, that's really how I dealt with it. I was like, oh, a lot of bookings in Florida and Texas this year. Oh, a lot of bookings in uh, Montana, you know? So that's that, and then now, now I'm working everywhere again, so it's great. Yeah, I want to perform for whoever, I don't care. <laughs> I'll go tell jokes wherever, I'm not trying to stay home. How many years have you been at it? Uh, this will be my 15th year. 
the comics that we've been getting for this thing have all been really good comedians. You haven't had any shit comedians yet? You haven't talked to anybody? <laughs> that's great. Well, that's why we're, we're at Helium. That's, that's the thing. Got to go to LA, you'll meet some. I mean, this club's just always paid good money to have the best comics, but then also did attract that uh, Florentine, uh, Greg Giraldo, like that kind of type of comic. So it got that reputation based on those phenomenal comics that come through the stage, which makes everyone down go, we want to work on that stage. I've always looked up at this club as far as like, oh, to do the Philly Helium is like a big deal. Um, and it still feels great when you see that booking come through, you go, oh, yeah, I get to go back to the Philadelphia Helium. Well, when you see the guys you like doing it, you go, I want to do what they're doing. I'm daily inspired while co-jealous. Co <laughs> I'm jealous and inspired every day by all the people in my business. So I'm like obsessed with it. It's the only group I've ever had. I'm a straight white guy. We don't have a lot of groups. So uh, being a comedian is the one thing that I am very group about. Yeah, that's, what, that's how I see it.